All right, good morning to you all. Glad to have you, glad to have you um, on this Worshiping Wednesday. If I'm not mistaken, today is Wednesday morning. Yeah, today is Wednesday. <laughs> feeling, feeling good this morning, glad to be here, glad to be with you again. Um, to share in another devotional thought this morning. Um, as usual, come on in, say good morning to each other. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get started here in a few moments. Glad to have you, glad to have you. All right, good morning, good morning, Elder Woods. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, Preach, I'm doing good. All right, all right, all right. Good morning to everyone. All right, I see Brother Daryl Dabney, Sister Phyllis Wise, my sister Liz in Oklahoma, my cousin Kay in Huntsville, Sister Gail Grant. All right, good morning, good morning. All right, another beautiful Wednesday morning. Mm. Hope you're experiencing some great weather like we are here in New Orleans, where you are. Mm. Amen, amen. Mm. Elder and Sister John, good morning, good morning. All right. Good morning. Coming from St. Oh, Elder and Sister John, you're in St. Lucia? All, All right. right. Yeah, I guess y'all honeymooning. <laughs> Is it anniversary that time, or honeymoon time, or just celebrating Valentine's Day? Mm. Extended Valentine's Week. Well, well y'all enjoy St. Lucia. Hope y'all have an awesome time there. Get enough sun and a beach or whatever for me. Amen. All right, all right. St. Lucia. Good morning, Sister Janie Lewis. Out in Las Vegas, Sister Gwendolyn Bobille. All right. Good morning to you. All right, all right, Pastor Francois. Good morning, good morning. All right. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll be praying for your family during this time of bereavement. They say they're there for a funeral. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep them in prayer, the elder and sister John. Yeah. All this. Pastor Francois, Sister Stephanie Francois, Sister LeJohn Shepherd Joseph. Uh, Brother Frederick McLean, Sister Tony Peterson, Las Vegas, Trey Moore. All right, All right. Sister Rebecca McKinney. My sister Stella Walker, Huntsville, Alabama. Tony Daria, Tobago. All right, my sister Patricia Carnegie. All right, D.C. Sister Virginia Hodges, Las Vegas. All right, as you come in, share with those who are coming on. I invite someone else, push your share button, invite button. Good morning, Sister Brenda Clark. Dr. Hezekiah Brinson. Sister Wylena, Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. All right, all right, Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. Wylena. All right, Sister Sandra Smith, Jimmy McKenzie, Liberta McKinney, Mobile, Latrice Michaela, Elaine Davis. All right, Sister Leola Cheney, Sister Taylor Sincor. All right, Sister Yvonne Custard, Gwendolyn Shepherd, Trey Moore. <laughs> All right. Okay, Sister, I'm going to meet Sister you guys. Virginia Hodges. Good morning. Good morning to those on the prayer line. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. All right. All right. Good to see you. Good to hear your voices this morning. Hope all is well with you on this worshiping Wednesday. All right. I see my daughter, Harriet. my firstborn daughter, Harriet James, Louisville, Kentucky. Good morning, Harriet Michelle. Harry, Harry, Shell. Good to see you. All right, Sister Veronica Dixon, Mobile. All right. Sister Penny Douglas Wilson from Huntsville, right. New Life, Huntsville. Good morning, Sister Penny. 
Good to see you. Some of the New Life family in Huntsville. Amen, amen. New Life. Sister Penny. All right, well, let's get ready to get started. Before we start, we do have um, uh, some special uh, prayer requests that we'd like to share with you. We want to keep, um, uh, just got word from Elder and Sister John. They're in St. Lucia, funeralizing a loved one there. Mm -hmm. Elder and Sister John. Uh, so let's keep their family in prayer. Uh, also, we want to remember uh, Sam Lockhart, my sister Liz's husband, who's having some health challenges. Mm -hmm. Also, Barbara Williams, uh, uh, my sister Liz's uh, sister-in-law. We want to remember Barbara Williams in our prayer. We want to continue to lift up Lil, Lil Elijah. We want to remember Brother Kenneth Hilliard. And um, uh, also, uh, Kenneth Hilliard, and also, um, uh, any other special prayer requests in regards to health challenges that we have. Uh, I think Sister Denise was getting a surgery today, uh, Sister Wimper's daughter. I want to remember her in our prayers. So let's continue to remember uh, these individuals. Also, I ask that you remember my wife as she travels to um, Orlando today by flight, that she have a safe flight. She's going down to help my daughter. Our daughter gets situated in her uh, uh, new, uh, new home. So just pray for her as she travels. All right. And there might be others. Prayer requests that we didn't mention, but like Elder Bernard said, God knows all of our prayer requests even before we speak them. So let's continue to pray for one another. Um, let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your love and mercy. And we pray that you would just bless each, hear each one of our prayer requests that we have shared. We pray for Elder and Sister John as they funeralize their loved ones there. I pray that you would just comfort the family there and uh, keep them safe while they're in St. Lucia and bring them safely back here when they have taken care of the business that they've gone there to do. And be with uh, uh, my brother Sam Lockhart, who's experienced some health challenges. We pray for healing. We pray for full recovery. We just pray that you be with him, be with his wife, uh, Liz as she stands beside him, and then remember her sister-in-law, Barbara Williams. Lord, we pray your blessings upon her and whatever uh, challenges she's facing right now in regards to her health. We pray for Lily Lodger, that you will continue to bless him and he continue to increase in his strength and, and weight gain so he can get out of the uh, NICU and be able to go home to be with his uh, parents. And Lord, we pray that you bring up brother Kenneth Hilliard, uh, continue to watch over him, continue to perfect, provide for his need right now. We pray that he will have a good um, uh, uh, recovery. And uh, as they go through the physical therapy, may he uh, do well and uh, be back to his normal strength. And Lord, there are many other needs that we cannot even uh, mention right now but you know each one. So we ask that you would honor them according to your will and according to the needs of each individual. We pray for the family, we pray for the Cooper family who's uh, uh, grieving the death of uh, Sister Cooper's mother. We pray that you would comfort the family and be with them as they prepare to funeralize her mother on this Friday. As Lord, just bless Lord, you know our heart and you know our desires. And Lord, I just ask that you be with my wife as she prepares to travel to Orlando. Give her a safe flight, Lord, and provide everything she needs. And I pray that everything will go well as she works to set up, uh, help my daughter get uh, established there in her apartment there. So just bless, Lord, and continue to bless each and every one of us. We thank you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Bless now as we share this thought from your word. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, again, good morning to everyone. We hope all is well. 
we're going to continue uh, 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 our study today in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3. If you want to turn to Daniel chapter 3, we're going to be looking at a few verses in Daniel chapter 3, uh, starting with verse 1, starting with verse 1. Uh, uh, Daniel chapter 3, uh, starting with verse 1. And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And then verse 4 says, Then and Herod cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and countries, uh, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackpot, the psaltery, the dussommer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king have set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Here, here is the problem here. Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler, the king, made a law, made a rule, a decree that commanded the people to fall down and worship an image. Now, that poses a problem for those of us who are children of God, those of us Christians, because we know one of the first commandments says we should have no other image before our God. No other image, and we should not bow down and worship in an image. So this is the direct violation of the commandments of God, where God says, do not make any images, do not fall down and worship in the images. You are to worship God and God alone. So here now, uh, uh, the, 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 the three Hebrew boys and Daniel and other children who have been taken into captivity are faced with a situation where they could either choose to bow down and worship the image, or they could choose to take a stand and refuse to uh, honor the command that has been made. And so, but, but, but the problem is, if they choose not to bow down, the Bible says, the command says, that they will be thrown in the burning, fiery furnace. In other words, they are going to lose their life. So now I don't know about you, but this is a hard situation. And don't just jump up and say, "Yeah, I would have, I wouldn't have bowed down either." You don't know what you would have done in that situation because you have not experienced that yet. You have to say, "I hope and I pray that God will give me the strength at that time." I, 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 I know where my mind is. I know where my heart is. I don't want to bow down. I don't want to do, violate God's law. But, but, but when you're faced with a situation like that, that's a life or death situation. But look at what uh, the Hebrew boys did. Uh, verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the king asked them why they didn't bow down to worship the image, they said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, be not careful to ask, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In other words, uh, you, you should already know us by now. You should know who we are. You should know what we're about. You know the God we serve. And the God we serve said, don't bow down to images or to worship in the idols or pagan gods or anything like this. So they refuse to bow down. Verse 17 says, if it be so, our God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But this is where the faith that steps in. This is where the real faith, the genuine tried and tested faith stands in. This next verse says, but if not, see it's one thing to say we will not. If God saved me and we know God can deliver me, it's one thing when we know God's going to deliver us, but it's another thing when we're not sure or we not we don't know how God's going to deliver us, how God's going to step in. But the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew boy said, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. 
And, and, and so they defied the king. They said, we will not bow down. We know God can save us from the burning, fiery furnace, but we want to let you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, just in case he do not save us, just in case he allow us to go into the burning, fiery furnace, we will not bow down and serve you or worship the image. You see, uh, 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 this is a classic act of, uh, of, of, of civil disobedience. This is a classic act of civil disobedience. The king had made a law that went against the commandments of God, and they took the right and took a stand to disobey the king. Now, we know the story. The king now takes, tell his servants to take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the fiery furnace. They go into the fiery furnace, but thank God, when the king looked in, he said, I threw in three, but something's going on. There's four people. Somebody else showed up. Somebody else is in there that we didn't throw in, but somebody else stepped in. You see, we need to understand when we obey God, and, 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 and even when it comes to the point where we have to disobey man, God will be with us through whatever we have to go through. So what we need to understand, you need to understand, I want to share four things uh, 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 about how people respond to trials, how we All respond to trials sometimes. Number one, sometimes we uh, respond to trials by trying to avoid trials at all costs. And sometimes, because we're trying to avoid the trial, we'll make a compromise. We'll compromise our principles, our values, our beliefs in order to avoid the trial. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not compromise in order to be recognized. They went into the fiery furnace. Number two, sometimes we get angry at God. When God allows us, when God don't stop the fiery furnace, uh, stop us from going in the fiery furnace, Sometimes we get angry with God. Another way we respond to trials in our lives, we think the worst. Sometimes we think the worst. We think God is punishing us for something you did, or maybe he has left you or, or forgotten you. You need to understand, some trials that you go through is not about punishment from God. Sometimes God allows us to go through trials. The other way we respond sometimes is we give up. In other words, we throw in the towel. We give up. We give out too quick and too easy. But I want to give you some life lessons. And then we're going to talk about this thing called civil disobedience. I want to give you four life lessons that we can get from, from this, uh, this passage of scripture right here. Number one, sometimes your work ethics, your principles and your values give you a platform to speak truth to power. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they were in the position they were because they did what God called them to do. They were faithful to God. They served God. And when they were in an un uncomfortable situation, they were obedient to the powers to be. And this allowed them the opportunity to speak truth to power. When power, the powers to be, went against the word of God, then they were able to stand up and speak truth to power. So sometimes your faith or your stance, your position will put you in a position to speak truth to power. Number two, trials are not always a, a sign of God's absence or his punishment. Hmm. Don't miss that. Trials, the trials you go through in life are not always signs of God's punishment. A lot of times we think, well, what have I done wrong? Now the time is not what you've done wrong. Sometimes it's about what you've done right. right See, now. the Hebrew boys were being punished because they did the right thing in God's sight. Mm -hmm. So trials are not always a sign of God's punishment or his absence in your situation. Mm -hmm. Number three, sometimes, sometimes, this is where it's hard to, hard to, this is the one that's hard to take. Sometimes God will allow you, he will choose not to deliver you from the fire Sometimes he would make a choice not to do, deliver you from the fire. Mm. He allowed the Hebrew boys to go in the fiery furnace. 
Sometimes he allow you not to be delivered from the fire so he can show up and show his glory through the fire. Mm. See, God showed up in the midst of the fire. Mm. He didn't deliver them from the fire. He showed up in the fire and he was with them in the midst of the fire. So sometimes there are things that God will allow us to go through. Sometimes the pain won't go away. Sometimes the divorce will come. Sometimes you will get a terminal uh, diagnosis that the doctors might say uh, uh, is nothing I can do. Sometimes God will allow that wayward child to stray away. and But God will show up in the midst of the trials that you're going through, and he will show his glory in the midst of it. Number four, and this is something we need to understand. Instead of asking God to remove you from the fire, most of the time we ask God to remove the trial. Instead of asking God to remove your trial, I want you to start looking for Jesus Christ to show up and to be with you in your trials. So, so what I want to close out with, because this is a classic act of civil disobedience, mm. civil disobedience. And there are many examples in the Bible where there are people who had to uh, 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 disobey the laws of the land. So let's look at this thing called civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is permitted by God when the government's laws or commands are in direct violation of God's laws and commands. Whenever the government make a law or a command that's in direct violation of God's laws and commands, God allow us to disobey those laws. Now, for example, remember Rosa Parks. They had a law of, on the buses that if uh, that colored people could not sit in the seats up front, people of color. They call us colored people during that time, but we're talking about people of color. But they they would, would not law, allow us to sit in the seats that were designated from the for whites. And remember, Rosa Parks took a stand, and she was tired. She had just gotten off from her long days of work, and she was tired, and she sat down in one of the seats that should have been reserved for whites. And the white person, lady, asked her to move and she refused to move. That was civil disobedience. She had a right to disobey, a biblical right to disobey uh, uh, this law that man had made, all right? But we need to understand one thing. Christians should and could res can resist the government that commands or compels evil and should work nonviolently within the laws of the land to change a government that permits evil. All right, the next thing we need to learn about civil disobedience. If a Christian obey, disobeys an evil government or a law that the government has put out that's not right, unless he can flee from the government, he should accept the government's punishment for his actions. Now, let's make that clear. We have a right, God-given right, to disobey the laws of the land. But when we disobey the laws of the land, we have to understand that there could be some consequences that we have to pay as a result of us uh, uh, disobeying the laws of the land. And we must be ready. So when we take a stand, when we get out there to march uh, in, in these movements and stuff, we must be ready if they come and say, we're going to lock you up. We have to be ready to deal with that consequence of our act. We have to take a stand. But God expects us to take a stand, even though there are consequences. We have to still take a stand. And, 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 and um the last thing I want to share is Christians are certainly permitted to work to install new government leaders within the laws that have been established. In other words, a part of civil disobedience is to exercise your privileges and your freedoms and your rights. And one of those rights is the right to vote. So when we see government officials, whether it be mayors, governors, presidents, uh, whoever, 
when we see government officials who are in, a, uh, in position and, and they are misusing and abusing their, their, their office and, and mistreating people and abusing people and, and creating havoc in our world, we have a right to stand together and vote those individuals out of office. And I would say to an individual, if you're not voting, mm. you ought not be complaining yes, about right. what's going on in the world. Amen. So as we close out, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, refused to bow down and worship this image because it violated God's laws. It was not a, a law that was in harmony with the will of God. We too must take a stand. And we must take a stand and we must prepare ourselves. Just like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, took a stand, we have to know when to stand for righteousness. Mm -hmm. We have to know because people are dependent on you and dependent on me. It's not always easy. The situation might always not turn out pretty, but in the end results, when you do what's right in the sight of God, you will be blessed. So God bless you as we continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that, for that word, Pastor Goodlow. Um, and yeah, as, as you were speaking, I was thinking exactly of that story um, that you led out with being able to stand regardless of the consequences. And yeah. um, that's, that's a, that's a standing that rests in the God that we serve. Um, nothing that I see in the text, you know, about Dan, about the, the three Hebrew boys saying that they were standing in their own strength. They were standing in their relationship with Christ. So mm. let us take, take inventory and um, be encouraged that when we stand for what's right, when we stand for what God says, he will take care of us in the consequences and thereafter. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the kind of God that we serve. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, remember to join us this evening at 7 p.m. for our um, prayer, praise, and power hour. We'll have Dr. Leslie Pollard this evening, I believe, yes, um, from, from Oakwood University, continuing in our series on social justice and the word of God. You do not want to miss this evening at 7 p.m. So uh, by God's grace, we'll we'll close out at this time, Pastor. Yes. Also, uh, twelve yeah. o'clock noon, we have our right. twelve o'clock noon prayer, praise, and power hour with Pastor mm -hmm. ben Francois. All right. Join us also at noon and at seven p.m. today. Let us let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for encouraging our hearts this morning. God, there's. I'm imagining that there are some areas in our life where you are asking us to take a stand, um, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our churches or whether it's in our communities, you're asking us to, to take a stand. You're encouraging us to take a stand. So God, give us the strength and the courage and the faith that we need to stand where you've called us to stand. Give us all of the tools that we need to be the voices you need um, us to be for others who, who will speak truth to power in your name. Thank you for those that are joining us. We lift up those prayer requests that were mentioned earlier that are on the hearts and minds of your people be with each and every one. We pray that you move in a mighty way in those lives of individuals who have lost loved ones, who are grieving the loss of loved ones, who are still recovering from health challenges. God, restore us, rejuvenate us, and reignite us as we continue to walk and press toward the mark of prize of the high calling. God, we thank you for your gift of salvation. We accept it, and we pray that we live saved lives from now until you come. Continue to bless, bless Pastor and Sister Goodlow. Continue to widen their ministry and, and fill them with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a blessed day on this Worshiping Wednesday, and we'll see you either at 12 noon, 12 noon, or 7 tonight. Again, don't miss tonight. We're going to be blessed with a powerful presentation with Dr. Leslie Pollard tonight at 7 p.m. And then also just to, uh, keep this date, uh, March the 6th. Don't mm -hmm. forget our, 
Convoy of Hope. Uh, a big 18-wheeler truck will be here delivering us a truckload of food to deliver to our community. All right, God bless you. All right, you guys take care.